Welcome back everyone, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and in this video we are finally gonna wrap up our detailed view here. Um, there's just basically one more main thing that I wanna add, and it's the description for each coin. So we're downloading this already, but we don't have it on the screen. And the description adds a great experience because for someone who like clicks on Bitcoin, they can now read about it and understand what they're actually looking at, not just a bunch of statistics. So I'm back in our Xcode project and I have our current app up here on my simulator on the right here. And in the last video, we added a really cool chart so that when I click one of these coins, it pops onto the screen and it has some really cool animation. Our chart is now green because it went up over the last seven days. We have some indicators for the actual price on this chart, as well as the dates, and it's looking really cool. So our detail view is really coming together. We have a bunch of statistics. We have our navigation bar with the coin logo. The title goes into the navigation bar as we scroll down and comes back out when we scroll up. It's looking pretty good. But I was looking at the data that we get when we make our second API call for this detail view. And that's in the uh, coin detail data service. We are getting back a coin detail model. And if I jump into that definition, there's, there's some other data inside this coin detail model that we are not yet using. And most notably, that is the description and the links. So the description is just some text that describes what the coin is. And that would be really cool to add to this detail view because right now we have some cool statistics, but we don't actually have any text saying like, what is Ethereum? There would definitely be some cool details to have on this screen. And additionally, we are, are getting some links in this call. So if we look at the links struck down here, we're getting back a homepage as well as a subreddit URL. And these are obviously optional because there's a chance that we don't get them. But uh, basically, I want to put this description and both of these links, if we get them, on the screen. So let's jump back to our detail view. And we're going to start with the description. Now, to put the description on our view, of course, we need that data coming through our view model. So let's jump into the view model. And right now we have uh, these two arrays for all of our statistics. We have our coin, but we don't have anywhere to save this new data. So let's create a couple published variables. Let's create an app published var. Let's call this coin description. It'll be of type. And if I jump into the coin detail model, the description is going to be a optional string. The homepage and the subreddit URL will also be optional strings. So let's make this, uh, the coin description, a string. Let's make it optional. And we'll set it equal to nil to start. Let's copy, let's paste that twice. And let's make the second one website URL. And the third one will be Reddit URL. So we're going to start them equal to nil. But if we get this in our callback, we obviously want to set these up. So in our subscriber here, we're subscribing to the coin details. And in this one right here, we are we're combining it with the coin, which is this published variable. We're mapping those and we're returning it. And because the data that we want is coming from this coin details, we could add some logic into this map data to statistics and have this when we get this coin detail model, we could return this as well as some of the extra data that we want. But I think it will be a little bit cleaner for our purposes to just subscribe a second time. So down here, let's just add coin detail service dot coin details with the money sign. And we're going to do the same thing that we did up here. We're going to subscribe to this publisher, except this time we're just going to sync it directly. We're not going to map anything. So here let's call dot sync. We will receive the value and this will be a uh, returned coin details. Let's make it weak, of course. So we'll do a weak self and we'll set uh, self dot. And let's get our three new items here. The coin description, website URL and Reddit URL. We'll set self dot coin description equal to the returned coin details dot description dot en. And that is, if I look at the coin detail model, it's coming through the description, which is of type description, and the description is coming through in English. So that's what the EN stands for, and it's a type optional string, of course. And if we go back, and it looks like I typed this wrong, this should be coin description. Let's set self.website URL equal to the returned coin details dot 
um, links dot website URL or dot uh, home page and the home page is an array of strings so let's call dot first and finally let's set self dot uh, reddit URL equal to the returned coins dot links dot reddit subreddit URL and lastly just like up here let's store this subscriber or right, I think it was just easier to separate for our purposes these two subscribers so you know we could go back and refactor this code so that you know because we're subscribing twice we could actually just put it all together so that we map it once but I think for our purposes it's just easier right now to subscribe two separate times and we'll set up our data separately but now that we have this data let's put it onto the screen so let's go back into our view and let's start with the description so underneath the divider here for the title, let's add a Z stack. So let's say here, if let uh, coin description equals the VM, the view model dot coin description. And this coin description, if we get it, is a string. So we also want to check that this string is not a blank string and it's not empty. So let's also check comma that coin description dot is empty and we'll open the brackets. But let's actually check that it's not empty with the exclamation point behind it. So not is empty. And if we do get this coin description, then let's go ahead and put it on the screen. So we'll put a text with the coin description. Let's click resume on the canvas. Let's see if we can get the description pulling in here. And it looks like we have the description here. I'm going to scroll down and uh, the description is very, very long. And if I scroll through it, it looks like we have some HTML code that's actually coming through the description here. So this is clearly not supposed to be part of the readable description, right? If I scroll down, we have um, a couple more HTML codes here. So most of the description looks good, but obviously there's this weird HTML that we want to take out. So to do that, we're going to create a quick extension. So I'm going to right click our extensions, create a new file. It's going to be a Swift file and let's just call this string because we're going to create an extension of string. Let's call extension of type string and we'll open the brackets. We're going to create a, we're going to create a quick var. We'll call it removing HTML occurrences. And this will return us a type of string as well. And very simply here, we're going to return self, which is the current string dot replacing occurrences with. This is just a handy uh, completion that we can add here with the of, with, options, and range. The string that I'm going to add here, I'm just going to copy and paste. I found this online. This is basically used just to find the HTML in, our, in the string. So we have the less than sign, the square brackets, we have the caret, the greater than sign, the plus, and another greater than sign. We're going to replace these characters with a blank string, so nothing. And we're going to use the compare options of a regular expression, and the range will be nil. You don't really need to understand what we're doing here. I found this online. This is just a quick extension to get rid of the HTML in our string. So I'm going to go back to our, let's go to our coin detail model. And in our coin detail model, we have our description, but let's create another computed variable. Let's call it a var, let's call it readable description. And it will be of type string. And here we will return the description dot en. So this description dot removing HTML occurrences. And this is optional, so let's just make it optional here as well. So now let's use the readable description instead of the description here. Going back to our view model, uh, the detail view model, instead of return coin details dot description dot en, let's call return coin details dot readable description. Let's jump back to our view, the detail view. And I'm going to click resume one more time. And hopefully some of this HTML is now removed from our description. All right, I'm going to scroll down and it looks like I don't see any of that HTML going on. So it looks a little bit better already. And this is looking good, but of course, this is not really a great user experience right now because the description is so long. 
So instead of leaving it like this, let's just wrap it up to the first three lines and add a button so that the user can click more if they want to read the full description. So on the description here, let's first set the dot line limit and we'll set it equal to three. So we set it equal to three. It's going to just go down to three lines and then show us the dot, dot, dot. And underneath here, let's then put a button uh, so that we can extend the description. So let's put this text inside a V stack and we'll open the brackets, put the text inside and underneath the text, let's add a button to use the action and label here. And we don't have an action yet, but the label, let's just say uh, read more dot, dot, dot. All right. And let's add a frame to the V stack. Let's give it a frame with a max width of infinity and an alignment of leading so that it is pushed to the left side here. All right, so the whole V stack is to the left, but I also want to push the alignment of the items in the V stack to the left. So on the V stack, let's add alignment of leading. All right, this looks better. I want to make this read more uh, an accent color of blue, just so users know that they can click on it. Let's also maybe make the text in the button a font of caption, a font weight of bold. I think that will look a little bit better. And maybe a little, let's add a little padding, so we'll call it padding, uh, maybe dot vertical of four. See how that looks. I think that looks a little better, a little easier to click on. All right, and on this text, let's change the font a little bit. So. Uh, maybe on the text here, let's call dot font of maybe call out and let's give it a foreground color of color dot theme dot uh, secondary text. So it's gray. I think that looks a little bit better. And now let's just add some animation so that when we click this, we can extend the text here. All right. So to do that, I'm going to go up to the top of our view here uh, underneath the state object. Let's add an at state private var and let's call this show full description so be of type bool and we'll set it equal to false to start and when we click on the button in the read more button let's just toggle with animation let's make it maybe uh, dot ease in out and we'll open the brackets and let's just toggle the show full description dot toggle so every time we click this button it'll either pop open or pop closed and to actually do that animation, we're just going to change the line limit. So if the line limit is three, it looks like this with three lines. But if we change the line limit to nil, uh, obviously there is no limit and it would be the full description. So all we really need to do is just animate this line limit. So we'll say um, show full description question mark. So if we're doing full show description, uh, nil, otherwise three. And now on our preview, we can click the read more and it will show the entire description and then we should be able to click it one more time and it will go back up obviously once it's once it's extended we want to change the text here so let's also animate the text and we'll say show full description and if it's already showing let's say uh, less otherwise read more all right so it says read more let's click it it animates down and then it says less and it animates back up. I think that looks pretty cool for our description. Okay, so I'm gonna take this whole Z stack now. I'm gonna cut it and scroll down. Let's put it underneath the, uh, the titles here. Let's put a private var description section of type some view. Open brackets, let's paste in our Z stack. All right, and then scrolling back up, let's just add our uh, description section underneath the divider. Let's click resume on the canvas quick and uh, hopefully uh, it still builds. Cool, we have our description section. And then lastly, way down at the bottom of our app down here, I want to put the links that we were getting the homepage link and the Reddit link. So underneath the additional grid, let's add a Z stack and we'll open the brackets. Let's first check for the website. So we'll say if let website equals the VM dot uh, website URL. And this is a string. So we need to convert it to a URL. So we'll say dot website URL comma. And then we'll say 
uh, let URL equals URL, and we're gonna pass in a string, which will be the website. Let's actually call this website string. We'll pass in the website string, and then we'll open the brackets. So here, if we can get the string and we can convert it into an actual URL, then let's just add a link onto the screen. So we'll do a link, and we'll use the uh, title with the string protocol and destination. And the title here is going to say uh, website, and we'll pass in our URL. And I don't think I actually covered links in the SwiftUI Bootcamp, but it is a very simple component. It is literally just a button that you can click and it has a URL in it. And if the URL is valid, it will just open up Safari on the device and it will just jump to that website URL. So very simple. I don't think it needs its own video, um, but I do want to make it blue. So on the Z stack, let's just make an accent color of blue. So it's blue. Let's also set up the frame. We'll call it dot frame with a max width of infinity and alignment of leading. Looks a little bit better. Let's give it a font of headline so it's a little bit thicker. And then I want to do one more. We'll say if let Reddit string equals VM dot uh, the Reddit URL. And let's also say let URL equals URL. And we'll pass in a string, which is our Reddit string. Open the brackets and same thing, we're gonna create a link that says the string protocol will say Reddit and we'll pass in our URL. All right, so I'm not sure if Bitcoin has the Reddit um, and oop, looks like we made a Z stack, my fault. Uh, we should actually make a V stack here. So let's scroll down and all right, let's align the V stack with some alignment of leading and maybe spacing of 10. All right, so at the bottom, we should now have our website and the Reddit, which will ho hopefully open up in Safari. I'm gonna make the spacing a little bit bigger. Let's do maybe 20. And I'm gonna then cut this whole section here. Let's scroll down to the bottom and let's create a private var. We'll call this website section of type some view, open the brackets, paste that on in, and we'll take our website section and go back up and then paste that up here. Just so our body here is super organized, super readable. This looks really good to me. And let's build and run this to a simulator and see if those links work. All right, so I built this out. We can click on a Bitcoin. It goes to the graph, which is animating. We see our description pulling through, which I can click read more and I can read all about it, which looks pretty good. I can click less and scrolls back up, of course. And then at the bottom, we have our URLs where I can click on the website and it should open up a Safari on the device and it's going to Bitcoin.org, which is exactly what we wanted. And let's click on the Reddit and see if that works. It goes to uh, reddit.com backslash Bitcoin. So that looks like that works as well. Let's check it on like one or two other coins here. Um, and they might not all have websites, but let's do maybe Polkadot. Uh, we have the description coming through, which also looks pretty good. This is a little bit shorter description. And if I scroll down, we have the website. And this is all working. Let's do one final one. Let's do Uniswap. We have the description, a short little description, which actually the animation looks a little bit better on this actually. Uh, and then we have the website. Let's check out the Reddit. And it looks like it is also working. All right, guys, I think we are done with this detailed view. This is a lot of cool information and data we have. We have this chart that's animating at the top. I think it looks really, really good. We are in the final stretch of our app. We're going to start to wrap it up. And in the next video, we're going to create a settings view uh, so that when we click this eye on the home page, we actually can go to another screen with a little bit of information about our app. All right. Thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.